And now we have our final speaker, Debbie Lander, before we then go into the Q&A. So, Debbie, welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, yeah, my name is um, Debbie Lander, and you're going to put the PowerPoint up for me, aren't you, George? Excellent. Um, I, I work as a director and a producer of arts organizations um, and cultural programs. So I, I'm going to talk to you for 10 minutes. Okay, I'll keep it to 10 minutes. Um, about um, this, really to, want to look at this question about what business model innovation um, might look like um, in digital and gaming culture. And I, in a way, I was kind of quite challenged by that question when I was thinking about this presentation, because for me, when everyone says the word business model, I get a kind of allergic reaction. I always think what they mean is, where's the money? Yeah, where's the money? And, I've, um, and so what I'm going to talk about is um, collaborative um, working, and I'm going to focus on how bridging partnerships um, across sectors um, helps um, artists and organizations um, increase their audiences and also generate um, new um, income streams, but also evolve business um, into a new form. So I've never really been involved in anything that I would describe as profitable, um, <laughs> for sure, but I've certainly been involved in, um, yeah, I think what, I, what, I, what I've been involved in predominantly is curating networks of partnerships that produce programs that output innovation in terms of business models over a long period of time. So um, I'm going to go, um, I'm going to be a bit retro here, which is where the clock comes from. And I'm going to talk to you about um, two projects that I've been involved in. Um, one is an organization called Shinkansen. And, um, called Shinkansen, which is actually, um, I think, a business, well, it is a business model for the digital era that was created before the digital era that is probably more culturally relevant now in terms of the way that it works than actually was then. And then I'm going to talk to you about how Shinkansen's methodologies were replayed large um, for the work that I did um, on the Cultural Olympiad, which is the program called um, We Play. So that just, that's just come on, can you hear me? No, no, no. Um, so in terms of Shinkansen, Shinkansen was a digital collective that ran from 89 to um, 2004. And it had a focus on um, working with performance and um, media artists. And it was an early pioneer in developing um, interfaces for full body telepresence in virtual spaces. And, um, and one of the things that um, it was learned to be recognized for was working was network culture um, before the term network culture was um, in the currency. Um, and in terms of this business model, how it operated was with um, collective values, which I think are a really important part of the business ecology um, today. So that was bringing together artists and technical people and producers and marketing and business people to work in small groups um, across the world to, to create um, virtual physical projects. Um, the other thing it did, which is why I've used this picture, which is a picture of a large-scale installation for a church that was um, installed in London, um, in Islington in 93, was because it was, the, it was the, um, the nature of the work that drove the business model, because this project... Um, forced us to work with an idea which is now, you know, international co-producing, which I think is really common, but it was actually working with multiple partners across multiple um, locations to create bits of the work that could then be brought together and, scale and scaled up. And this is a methodology that um, we continue to work with, with an average of about 13 to 15 partners in every single project. Um, and the third thing, I think, which is interesting about the, um, the Shinkansen business model was that actually the user experience from the very um, beginning was always at the forefront. So what we ended up doing over 15 years was creating an extremely hybrid, um, distributed, fluid organizational structure that could go up and down depending on um, the resources around. And what that led to 
was this project called Future Physical, which was um, a cultural program that was designed for East England in um, 2000, which actually connected the fields of biotechnology, wearable computing, um, environment and technology, and responsive environments. And, sorry about the jumping. And one of the things of the co-production methodology that I talked to you about before was this enabled a grant that was about £300,000, I think, to become £1.2 million by working with 70 partners to create a cultural project from those different sectors. And then the final legacy was after 15 years, Shinkansen completely evolved, and it evolved into this organization called Body Data Space, which still continues, which does full body telepresence um, in virtual worlds, and actually reconstituted itself as a... Um, creative industry design unit. So that's a kind of 15 year trajectory of how arts research moved through the digital era to become a creative industry design unit when it had been working across those areas before this notion of a creative economy existed. And how it did it was by bridging partnerships across lots of sectors and working um, collectively. So that's, um, that's an old example of a business model that I think is really current now in the way that um, the digital and gaming sector works. And what that did was actually for me, because I left at that point and I, st and I moved into working on major events, was about how you can place innovation into the mainstream by in a way replaying um, some methodologies around how you get people working together. So this second example, um, which is um, We Play, was um, a four-year cultural program that I designed for the um, Olympics which, uh, and the cultural program for London 2012, which took place right across the UK. And um, this project, we play, um, the business model for that was starting off with a social um, mission. So this is moving from the user experience being at the forefront to the kind of social purpose being at the, the forefront. And the idea of working with this idea about play, of course, was connecting into play culture. But more importantly, it was actually about a vision for a, a collective's um, participation in a massive you know, national event. And, then, um, and, it, and it was designed around um, strategic um, regional partnerships. So this was actually bringing, this was now moving co-production into the realm of linking up organizations. So the program was um, delivered by connecting organizations to each other. So it's like networks of networks across the whole region, um, producing, I think, in the end, 2,000 events. And again, multiplying a budget, which was 3 million at that point, which became 10 and a half million. Um, and two of the outputs of that, which was effectively having nine organizations working together, um, doing individual things all across the region, was this festival, Abandoned Normal Devices, which I think Nesta mentioned earlier, which was one of the legacies of that program. So outputting a new business that works um, with digital culture in traditional and non-traditional settings. And then this final thing as well, which is the bit that was actually really complicated to pull together, but it was a three-day outdoor event, bringing digital culture into the outdoor um, spaces in a city called Preston, and um, it keeps jumping, sorry. But uh, maybe it's good that it keeps you alive in a way. I am the last speaker, yeah? But this was a co-production between six different festivals that actually took place in Preston. So therefore, and the money generated around that, the business model for that enabled it to plug into cultural tourism and into cultural regeneration and into culture and into the money for digital and into the money for games. So that's like pulling, connecting your work to multiple broader agendas to enable actually some really extraordinary things to happen. And I'm going to finish on just really quickly on two things, which is firstly um, this project, which was actually created by Alistair Albank, who did that really fantastic thing that we experienced at lunchtime. And working cross-sector enabled us to do an online project 
which collected the handprints of residents across the whole of the Northwest. They could upload them on the internet or they could actually scan their hand at events. And then creating this artwork online, but also being able to output it as an interactive digital installation on a bridge in Preston, in a city that had never had any outdoor digital work of that scale before. So that's an example of co-creation in public space on a massive scale that would not have been possible unless we'd been working in this cross-sector way. And it wouldn't have been possible unless we were articulating digital innovation within the context of a city regeneration agenda or tourism. And then the last one I'm going to end on, because this is really a nod to the people that have invited me to speak, is this project called Humble Market, which is created by Zakura Ura, which is where I, I got to know this fantastic theatre group. And they had um, the um, journey, I think we would call it, of actually creating um, a piece of work that would connect um, the um, Preston um, to Brazil at the end of the Olympic Games. So they did a real-time link between those two locations and they created a theatre piece um, for under a railway, under a railway in a, in a car park, somewhere in the back end of the Preston Park. But actually it's also the iterative process of the art making because it started as an exhibition and it moved forward. And again, this type of project was only really feasible because it was actually brought together partners from lots of different um, parts of um, the Olympic remit but also different pots of money that again linked up to. So I'm a real fan of actually working into broader agendas to enable um, some really exciting um, digital projects to happen. But so I think in terms of the business model, this is really an example about how working cross-sector enables you to develop methodologies that you can scale up and you can repeat in, in different situations, which isn't profitable. I don't think any of these things are profitable, but they are sustainable and they've definitely um, been um, durable. And I think I just, um, how long have I got? 10 seconds, fantastic, okay. So 10 seconds, I, I wanna finish actually on, because these are old examples, yeah? This is like 25 years of a trajectory of working with um, partners and networks. But I think this itself, I wanted to say to you guys, I think this model is a really good business model, actually, what we've experienced today. And I, um, I certainly um, see a really strong um, income stream for you two from the digital gaming conference sector. I think you can sell this methodology on. Yeah, and I think that's the point I'm saying. I think it, what we do and, and why we do it is really, really important. But I think the how and the, and the, the absolute genius of artists to create methodologies that actually the corporate and the commercial and the, you know, the creative end of the digital sector can use to achieve their commercialization. And then we can take that money and do the projects we want is possibly a really good model going forward. Thank you.